Well, folks, welcome back. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments. And today, as we fire up the taco assembly line, we go all the way back in time for the patron Melissa. All the way in old Yukon. Folks, the very first opening of the original... Oh, oh, all right, hold on. The original... The original... 2020. You know what that says? Double Masters. The set that boy. <laughs> well, let's talk about some memories and let's talk about, well, what's going on with this. So we're going to crack two little boxes and do a little mini case today. And for the people who don't want to stick around, I'm going to give you a quick little summary here. These boxes are incredibly rare and incredibly expensive, pushing all-time highs. These suckers are about $600 before tax on TCG players. So about $650 a box now for original OG Masters. With, yes folks, when a box topper actually meant something. I know. So first, let's crack a box topper when they actually were a really, really big deal. Here we go, folks. We got, oh, two cards? I didn't know, but I don't remember. I guess box toppers were two cards back then. Noble High Arc in a doubling season. Man, that's the way box toppers should be. I, I don't know in 2024 with whole power creep, universes beyond, everything's game pieces. Like, this is, Noble High Arc was such a big deal, man. And, of course, a doubling season. Beautiful double box topper there. Yeah, very, very, very expensive single cards. Extremely high EV. Like even there's there's commons and uncommons. Actually, nice to have her. Commons and uncommons in this product that are extremely expensive. The card quality is phenomenal in this product. And uh, ooh, Foundry, very nice uncommon. The old Oh Naganita Nitas? I don't know. Ad nauseum for the meme card and a oh my god pack one ad nauseum and a flipping carn oh great uncommon thirst for knowledge there so that is our first pack one I amazing box stoppers amazing rare amazing mythic and folks that's why these boxes and these are six hundred and fifty dollar boxes on TCG player bone picker great infamous card. Well, oh, infamous card from the Khan's Fate and Dragon. Oh, Brainstorm. Expedition map. Holy smokes, the amount of cards in this thing. Foundry. Dual Caster Mage. And the Explorer. The old tuckety tuck 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 tuck. In a nice capsule. You know, I know. This again, this came out in 2020. So foils and special cards and variants were still they contained a pretty good premium, by the way. So this was still before things really got nuts when Chris Cox, you know, dug his finger as a CEO and really distorted things. Ancient Stirring, great card. Absolutely made Boy, the common uncommon slot. That's why we're actually looking at the common uncommon slots, folks. Ooh, Vanna Morphin Power Rangers, great uncommon. Culling, trash for Rudy's treasure. and eh, not a good rare. And Wrath of God, very symbolic rare. We got Rudy in the forest and Rudy through the middle of the night. So weaker pack there. It's kind of weird. I know you, you guys can't you know, understand what I'm about to say, but even the cards smell different. Like they, they have a different feel and smell to them. It's quite interesting. Brainstorm, nice bomb there. What do we got going on here? We got Salvagers, Thirst for Knowledge, Flickery Wisp, amazing, gorgeous scepter there, great pull, and greater good for not bad. Drown, <laughs> jeez Louise, a foil thought sees. Again, Amazing, amazing modern era pool. Like, I don't. I guess I'll just put the. This was so. I guess this brings up the interesting question of why is this particular master set not only has it. Ooh, nice figure. We can um, Why is this master set not only recovered but going towards all time highs? Like, what makes this master set so much different than 2022 Ultimate and all the other ones? Commander Masters. You know, you get the idea. Masterworks. And Tempered Steel, in our two foils, we got Frog and Twisted Abomination. I think it's just a combination of some of these cards actually haven't had recent reprints too much. And I believe the fact that this was not overly... This product released in 2020. Therefore, the print run, the design of this set, was probably established in 2019. Does that make sense? 
So I don't believe this particular product. Um, my guys, that used to be a big card. Um, I guess I could put them. I put the mythics up there. I guess it doesn't matter. Ancient strings in it. So I think that had a big impact on it because they didn't really like Chris Cox didn't and Cynthia didn't really ramp things into oblivion until we really hit that 2021 end of 2020 kind of era. We got braids. Rolling Earthquake. Very, very iconic card. Anybody remember what this one? All right. Let's see how good a lot of you are. What was the original version in printing of that? All right. We got Parasitic and a gorgeous Urza's Tron reprint there for the old power plant. Yeah, I know. So I think, I guess when everybody, oh, a braid. That, wasn't that like a three, four dollar uncommon in the Amon kit? Hour of Devastating Your Ex. Wasn't, isn't that, wasn't that a really big deal back then? Sentinel. Topple. Hey, Mrs. A. That's a great mythic hit. Hey, Glimmer Void, that's not bad. And nothing in the foil slot. So the most important conversation now that we all know, that we all know how amazing this product is, I guess, what can we expect from other things? Are, is this a fluke? Are we going to have other master sets recover? Like, is, is Boulder's Gate Commander Legends, Commander Masters, or any of these ever going to recover? And actually perform similar to this product. And I know the market's overall answer is going to be no. It's all trash, Rudy. We get that. Ooh, Exploration. Animate. God. Exploration and Maze of If. Holy smokes. Um, first, these boxes weren't as expensive. So keep that in mind. These were not $500 Modern Horizon 3. Ooh, a braid. So the price points from WotC in this era was still before things. Ooh, we got old Mortal Kombat. Well, still before things got really extreme on the price increase inflation excuse. Got old Dr. R and a Scarab God. Double Mythic Pack right there, bad boy. Holy smokes. And, God, that Hinder looks so nice in foil. My goodness, that looks gorgeous. I swear the card quality was different. And I know everyone says different eras of magic. But I swear, the older the sets, the better the card quality. I don't understand that. By the way, Gauntlets. We got Magnets. Great Great, great playable cards back in the day. We got, hey, Dr. C of C and ugh, Master Train. God, like even these rares back in like the modern young Rudy day, like these were such a big deal. Holy cow, man. These are phenomenal. Like, Melissa, I don't know if you're looking for a specific pool or like, and keep in mind, I'm pretty sure this was a set with like Mana Drain or not Mana Drain. Um, um, wait, was it Mana Drain? What, Mana Vols? Mana Crypt? I know we had Mana Crypt, but was Mana... No, I don't think Mana Drain was in this one. Expedition map. There's a nice little hit. So, all right, here we go. Ooh! <laughs> Y'all remember the whole outcry about reprinting this Arabian Nights card? How there was a hot minute, years ago. No, reprint Abu Dhabi. Reprint it. They did it. Nobody cares. Death Shadow. Infamous card. Engineer, Spirit, and some nice gauntlet. Like, even, like, if I was, if this was, like, 2016, and I was doing mass box, opening, selling singles, getting a foil card like this would easily be a $10, $20 hit. Like, it was such a big deal, being a single seller and a mass box opener back in the day. Like, that, I would look at these things so different. Power Plant, Power Plant, nice. Peace Strider, and that's a nice little sellable card. Core Taffer, Hidden, and Guild Mage. And we got the Giant, and Oblivion Stone. There's a nice little rare. And we got the old Summoner and Stance. Believe it or not, again, here's another interesting card. Uh, the Valoria Stance. This particular card, I think this was Fate Reforged or Dragon's Dark here era. Because this was when I did, I remember doing the three to 600 boxes of Fate Reforged mass box opening. And this particular Uncommon, I would sell. We sold them all day long for $150 a piece or four packs for like four or five bucks shipped. And we were using eBay at the time. And that's why if you guys see my eBay account, which I don't really use anymore, you'll see it has some ridiculous 40, 50,000 feedback because we did like 150,000 transactions, blah, blah, blah. And it was mostly from that particular era of doing that. Invigorate, Mirror Smith, the old Jellyfish, and a Thought Seize with a nice pulse. A Thought Seize, a pulse, a foil of braid. Like, holy smokes. Thought Seize. Holy smokes. That was a phenomenal pack. That's what I'm saying. There was, it was such a weird time. And I hate to sound that it, I'm, I'm almost like nostalgic of that era because it was so much more enjoyable. It felt different, man. Heartbeat, Ash Baron, and oh, ladies and gentlemen, Sword of War and Peace. I forgot the sword cycle. 
is in this particular set. Oh wait, that's all centered pretty bad. Top to bottom, look at the thin margin. We got a top to bottom all centered sword there. I forgot the actual sword uh, cycle um, was in this. I was like, wait, what, what, is, what about the lands? What land cycle was this? It wasn't shock, it wasn't fetch. Was it filter lands? Or were they the garbage core set lands? I thought it was filter lands. Because some of the filter lands were $10, $20. Oh, oh, look at me. Ha <laughs> ha, that's how you know the, the video's a scam. I'm from the future. The rugged prairie. Yeah, so filter lands. I was like, wait a minute, we haven't had any lands. So there's still one or two of the filter lands, I think, are 10, 15 bucks. But I think most of them are down to like $5. And the blink moth. Holy smokes. God, look at the pools. It's still, it's still really enjoyable to crack these old things, bone picker. Like, it doesn't feel the same, brainstorm. Like, it has a fatal push, anybody? Holy crap, fatal. A goblin guide and walking ballista from the Kaladesh Aether era of crazy powerness. And a beautiful foil chalice there. That's one of the, you know, these only have 24 packs in a box. And like I said, we're only doing a, a two box opening from Melissa. Again, these are expensive boxes. They're quite rare. There is not a lot of these boxes left to go around. Basalt monolith and a reflection. We got a little, uh, Little double master theme going on with is that two Kayas? Is that Mrs. Kaya? And uh, we got endless Atlas, Treasure Keeper, and nothing. A Dragon's Maze card. You know, I, I do believe that this particular set is probably gonna be an anomaly. Okay. I don't oh godly. Ooh. Doubling season and a doom necro. Look at the art on that, by the way. Look at the art on that. We got doubling season. Oh, and okay, that's a good conversation piece. I want to. Like, I know the doubling season, everything's amazing, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you all something. This was the Shadows of Innistrad Eldritch Moon era of my younger days, okay? I, I had like 1,500 copies of this for my mass box. The original printing of this, I think it was. Was it Eldritch Moon or Shadows? Somebody will comment below. And, oh, my God. Four packs of these for five, six bucks. eBay, envelope with a stamp. Oh, we sold like all 1,500 copies. We paid, I'm no joke, I'm telling you all, we paid for, I swear, like 5 to 15 booster boxes just from that common card. It was wild, everybody. Hinder, Champion, Volley, eh, Arbiter, like the arts, and Ion Storm, eh. Alright, Foil Tron, Land, and a Foil Prism. Alright, weaker pack there. So, I do think moving forward in the future, I actually believe eventually there's going to be a point where Wizards is going to keep adjusting like we've already seen. And I actually think, more oh, Lightning... Um, I think more sets are going to stabilize in kind of... Ooh, nice little closet there. They're going to recover in value and stabilize, but I don't, I don't believe we're going to see other Master Styles products like Commander Masters or anything go to these six dollars $700 a box price. Fire lit thick. And one of my favorite pieces of art on a land, like ever. Like the gorgeous, that land... Oh, that is gorgeous looking. Blade Splicer, infamous uh, hot chick arm there, but the old Rudy's got crabs, and Tumble Maggot. So, all right, so we're about to end box one here. Um, unfortunately, Melissa, we did not hit the big bad boy Mana Crypt Expedition map again. Um, maybe we'll get lucky with one more in the close. Wounded Reflection, nice little double for the theme of Double Masters. All right, all right, Lord of the Vault here. We got a little weaker of the, the Mythic there, and a Foil Expedition map. That used to be a $10, $15 thing back in the day. Okay, well... There's, if you go on like a Dawn Glare and you hit original Double Masters like this, not 2022, crop rotation, you'll see, ooh, ooh, I didn't even realize this was in a set. Does anybody know what this is? Ms. Merrick Orb? Anybody? Uh, I think this is a $30, $40 rare. I could be completely Timmy Mode 5000, but I swear this is like a $30 card packed fresh. Whoa, Okay. And a duplicate, not that crazy there. And a sift and elvish. Hey, elvish and Rouge. Anyways, I don't, I think sets like Commander Legends, Boulder's Gate, number two, and those collector boxes. And I also think products like Commander Masters, these more modern day, weaker, diluted, I do think they are going to continue to push higher and recover. We've already been seeing that, okay? It's already been happening. And I think that does continue, but I don't believe those newer products are going to reach like six to eight hundred dollar, possibly thousand dollar box prices in the future. That a, a product like Double Masters will reach. I just don't think it's possible. <laughs> Psychotic rift. I know. After the reprint and uh, Ravnica remastered, it's kind of like really. 
and a brainstorm. Okay, so that one was nowhere near as good as the original, like the first one, the noble and the doubling. So obviously you can see the variance there. Look at the difference. A noble high arc in a doubling season compared to a brainstorm and a rift, that's a pretty big financial swing difference in value there, everybody. So I think between the two, I think Boulder's Gate or Commander Legends 2 collector boxes. And I believe that Commander Masters are going to be the new. We got the Fed and a Lux Cannon. Haven't seen that in a while. I Oh, and a foil spell skite. Um, God, wasn't this a $20, $30 card back in the day? I think the two of those sets are going to run kind of neck and neck. I think if I had to pick one over the other, man, we're getting so many expedition maps. My goodness. Oh, reprint Obulet! Oh, they reprinted it? Okay, now nobody cares. <laughs> Ravenous Trap from Zendikar Era. And Elephant from Conspiracy that nobody cares about. And Tuck Tuck Rudy's X. Um, how do I say this? Between the two, I know this is going to be a hot take. I still think Boulder's Gate. I've been, I'm going to say it over and over, and people can just rag on me all they want. Beautiful champion there. Lightning Axe and my oh, terrible pack. I still think Boulder's Gate, the collector box, I mean, we've got Boulder's Gate, draft and set, pushing $100 a box, and the collector boxes are still below $200. Like, I just, I, I think Boulder's Gate's a very, ooh, Sunforger, a very interesting recovery story after the collapse on release and the bear market and everything that happened. I, I think the biggest issue was just the, the misconception of the market, the weakening of the power of Boulder's Gate, but I still think it is going to be a, a big thing. I really do. Blasphemous Act, not bad. And eh, the Command. Vandal and Naturalist. Oh, weak. So that's that's going to be kind of my, my attitude, opinion towards it. But I want to be very clear. Like, even I don't have much of this original Double Masters product. Because, I mean, look, look at the card quality, by the way. Look at this. Look. Like, even the card quality of this is just absolutely, like, you don't see the nicks and chips. Like, look at this. Like, look at how nice that looks. Like, look at the corners. Like, it's just, it's something that when you handle a lot of cards, you really notice the difference. And I'm telling you all, on this product, I don't see anything else really toppling over this product. We got the old Revoker there. Grim Lava Mancer from the Core 2012-13 Infamous Core Set Era. Another foil expedition map, which, again, that's... Should be a ten dollar plus card. I'm sure it's not anymore in the game piece era, but I, I don't think anything's really going to overtake um, this. This is kind of oh, Blood Moon, very nice hit. I, I don't know. Like I got I got a rant on this real quick. Blood Moon is such an iconic card, but if you've ever actually again, you guys know Rudy doesn't know how to play Mujik the Gathering. You guys, but pretending I knew how to play Mujik the Gathering, this card is so iconic, so irritating to play against. I, I just. I, I hate that card. <laughs> I just don't like it. I understand it's powerful, this and that, but old man Rudy, I've always hated that card since the dark era, since the reprinting a billion times. I just don't like that card. It's just a personal thing. It's just, it's unfun to play with. All right, mage and this for a gauntlet. Oh, terrible. Dang. Box two, Melissa, just not being nice. We probably got like $100 in value of the whole box so far. Holy smokes, box two is just mean. Come on. Leech. Leech? All right, all right. Grand Architect, OG, uh, uh, Zendikar, World Wake, Eldrazi Era. Not bad. Catho, Ash. Oh, terrible again. Come on, give us some decent pulls. Like, really? Like, really? Like, are we dodging? Ooh, Thought for Foundry. And, all right, all right. Nexus, First Willy Cast, Cascade. Cascade's broken, we all know. All right, Master Ethereum. All right, not bad, not bad. Okay, that was a decent pack. Thirst for Rudy's X. Eh, all right, all right. That was that was a better pack. I just got to complain a little bit more, everybody. But I was just like, dude, this is just... Come on, we need to hit some serious mythics or something. Path to Exile, Sunken Ruins. Uh, one of the more expensive filter lands, I think. Stoneforge Mystic. Used to be the $20 to $40 rare. And the Core Tapper and Drowning Your Sorrows with Rudy's Face. Ah, can we... Oh, please, God. One mana crypt. Come on. One mana crypt. Lightning Greaves. All right, I love the art on that. Great old school card there from the uh, um, 
Mirrodin, Fifth Dawn era, I think. Uh, Avenger, Zendikar. Click. Oh, come on. Uh, come on. We're down to like 10 packs left and the video ends. Come on. Give us the spice. Make me feel good in the clothes. Throw, throw Melissa something special. All right. Magus of the Abyss. No. All right. Rudy the Rye. Redeemed. Eh. Fairy Mech. That's actually a decent foil common. Okay, those are good. Decent. Those are actually good foil commons. Oh, even the packs open differently, man. I can just go through them so quick. All right, here we go, everybody. Dismantle. Sphinx. Uh, Rage of Reflection. A little double card there. Cat Cleric. No. Divest, Pong of Five for Rudy. Rudy the old gorilla monkey man, Rudy. Come on, everybody. Ah. So, like I said, I want to have a, a closing comment once I finish cracking these last few. Fatal Push! But I really want. Ooh, Dark Steel Forge. Again, Blink Moth Nessus, Dark Steel Forge, Ink Moths, all, all these different little. Ooh, Sculpturing Steel. Ah, uh, the Inspector again in battle. Okay, good foils. We're getting killer. Foil common, uncommon, though. But we are not getting good foil rares or mythics, if any at all. Very, very few. Keeper, Invigorate, Banshee. Ah! Mm! Okay. $100 Mox Opal. Oh, and a Cyclonic Rift. Okay. Much better. Our first... I was like, dude, don't, isn't this the set with... This is the Mox set, right? With Opal and my, uh, um, Chrome Mox. Yeah, that's what it, so it was Chrome Mox, Mox Opal, and the Mana Crypt. I was like, dude, please. These things are like $100 plus cards, or Mana Crypt is. The rest are like, what, $75 to $100? Oh. Thought Reflection. <laughs> oh, God. No way. I didn't even realize Dr. Jace was in this. I didn't even realize this was the thing. Tell me you're old. I still see this card, and my heart skips a beat, as this is a hundred to two hundred dollar card. And if this was a foil, four or five hundred dollars. That's how much that card makes my heart skip a beat. It's like Liliana. There are certain cards that old man Rudy, I see it, and it's still just really it, it just takes my breath away, man. Thopter Foundry. And alright, alright, so ooh, good filter. I love the art in those filter lands. Alright, Magus, no. Whisper and another foil star. All right, so that was nice. We've got some, between a Jace and, honestly, a Mox. Melissa, that really, that box, too, that really made a huge difference there. And Sword of the Meek. Oh, uh, was this banned or restricted? This card was ridiculous. This was, like, an insane card. All right, we got Rudy the Sphinx sitting in Egypt on the pyramid. Frogify and a nice capsule there. Good, again, fantastic foil common on common. All right, as we get to the close here, everybody... It's definitely been a nice throwback. Oh, God, the bobble. The first time this bobble was, this was, the all okay, for those of you new to this channel, this card, this was, I remember selling, I think, was it foil bobbles or regular bobbles for $40, $50? Somebody's going to have to comment below. I can't remember. I have to Google that. Crop rotation. Oh, off-centered pack, too. Twilight Mire. We're pumping out the lands and a hammer. Okay, they got the old puzzle and Buried Ruin. All right, fun story time. So Buried Ruin, Core 2012. This was one of the big gun commons that saved my ass doing Core 2012 mass box openings when I did the three to 600 boxes of that. This particular card I sold for $1.50 or a play set instead of $6. You get a play set for five bucks or a buck 50 a piece on eBay. And being uncommon, I didn't have 1,500 copies. On this one, I think I maybe had three to 500 copies. And I did sell. I think I may still, well, no, I don't, dude, no, those all sold out. I don't think, I don't have any of those. These sold out years ago. And again, if you've got 400 copies, and even if you sell them for buck fifty, you net a dollar a piece. I remember, this paid for like a case of six boosters, just that one uncommon. Oh, great stories of magic history, man. Stories that just disappear as time moves forward. All the old fogies leave, and the young people just don't have any idea. Ancestral Blade, oh, terrible pack. Well, folks, last three packs. We're hoping for an insane ending here. Uh, thanks again, Melissa, for being a very kind patron. Give me a day or so, get all these cards shipped out to you. And as always, folks, ooh, time to see if they're the old sack the artifact, get a turn. <laughs> Dragon's Maze. Weapon Surge and Dread Terrible. Uh, I don't, again, I don't have, you know, maybe we'll do another box opening of this and maybe a year from now or something, but this isn't a product I really like to sell or do box openings on because I just don't have much of it left. Oh my god, Imperial fucking work. 
Imperial Recruiter, everybody. Like, uh, I don't know what it's worth today. I'm assuming it's just a worthless game piece. But if you know, you know. And, of course, the mere battle speed. And nothing. Terrible. All right, folks. This is it. The last pack in our nice... I know. This is 2020. The four-year throwback video of original Double Masters. We got Santa Rudy, Taco Assembly Line. Four years it's been, folks. Four years. I know. I've been on YouTube for nine years. Approaching probably 4,000 YouTube videos. Paladin. All right. Archangel of Mrs. T. Okay. Okay. Foil of Brain. And that's it. You know, folks, Philosophical Life Rudy is going to just tell you all. How do I say this? This is a very difficult industry and market, which is why we're always going to have the turnover. The people who are into this market, into, into the collectibles, into the cards, into the boxes, into the sealed product, into the vintage stuff, the grading stuff, the raw stuff. It's always going to be a revolving door of attrition of people who come and go from this industry. That's just doesn't make some people smart or dumb. It just makes them normal human meat popsicles. Because we all... It's very difficult to stay in this industry long term as a business person or an investor or anything like that. Even a player. Even a player. It's very difficult. The cost... The uncertainty, the prices that swing down on you and give you that bad experience. Being ran by a company, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, that we all swear there are times that they're just trying to literally destroy themselves from the inside. And the company believes the solution is to do universes beyond and reprint everything to the ground and appease a game piece army and try to make everything as cheap and try to lure in new people to replace the people who leave the card world. Unfortunately, that's what I believe the general perspective is of a lot of these higher-ups. So therefore, we, we see a lot of turnover and a lot of emotion in this industry and a lot of you know bashing people, stores, content creators, distributors, companies, brands. and I think it's always going to be that way. I think it always has been. And it always will be. And I think it's just... I don't think everyone maybe agrees or sees what I see as much is I see it's I, I feel like it's just so important to try to log the history of this stuff I mean how many people are going to realize the stories of this stuff the booms the busts the crash of two years and now the recovery and you know and let's just let's just state a simple question how did we go from a two-year crash to now Double Masters draft boxes, which we just saw, hitting $600 plus a box. Like, going after all-time highs. And, like, how does that happen? How does Commander Masters, which everybody said with the collector boxes, was supposed to go to $99? Never did. It's back to $200 on TCG Player. I think some people told me, I remember the last comments, people said they're still about 170s and 80s on eBay with tax and shipping. A little, about 10% cheaper. But it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. How... How do we always continue to move forward in like so much history repeats with ups and downs and in the long game it goes up, but yet we continue the same conversations over and over with endless magic products, Pokemon products, and every other card game products. We have the same redundant conversation because new people come in the market and all the people who know and listen to these videos, they leave. And the new people just go, Rudy, did you see this? They're coming back. I didn't think they'd come. And it's because they haven't been through multiple market cycles. It happens on Wall Street all the time. When I had a real job and I was at a brokerage firm as a licensed broker for years, I started in 07. I left in 2012 and expanded the, all the other businesses in the card business, hardcore, in 2012. That was a turning point for me. And I never looked back. You know, I've been all in now. For 15 years, and partially in doing this stuff for almost 25, 28 years. And the biggest thing that stands out is just every cycle in the stock market, 
when the S&P and Dow or NASDAQ hit new highs or go through a bear market like the NASDAQ did for two years. Bitcoin, same thing. Real estate, same thing. We go these time periods where it feels bad. And then suddenly, everybody wakes up and says, I don't understand. How did the S&P 500 hit an all-time high? How did Bitcoin hit an all-time high? I thought real estate in houses and single-family homes were supposed to crash way back down, pre-COVID levels. I, I don't understand. How come, oh, here's a good one. How come Boulder's Gate, set in draft, is $100 a box? And collector boxes of Boulder's Gate, which collapsed to like 100 are back to like 170s and 80s. 170s, 180s, plus tax, before tax. So essentially almost 200. Almost a full recovery back to the low 200s. And, you know, we blink our eyes and the answer to all everything I just said is, well, time. The only thing that separates you and me and the cards on this table in the taco assembly line is time. The more time we input into this stuff, the more it takes care of itself. People who've been around this channel a long time, there are people who think Rudy's the most amazing card investor of all time. There's people out there that think I'm the worst thing to ever happen to cardboard since the Taco was invented. And no matter where you stand on that perspective, time is going to take care of it. Time is going to make some people just look really right. Some things just go really wrong and some things fail. Some things do great. Time is just going to do its thing. All we do is talk about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Life is short. Have a beautiful day, everybody.